wanted to ask, why did our Secretary of State Hillary Clinton make this public statement about Russia defying the EU ban on sending Syria munitions? Clearly, uh, the UN peace envoy, envoy Kofi Annan is trying to put pressure on Syria. And here we have the president of Russia sitting face to face with our commander in chief saying that he pledges to do more to work with UN bodies while meanwhile he's sending Syria weapons. Right. Well, leave it to Vladimir Putin to refer to Syria as an affair. Uh, I mean, a lot of other people see it as a civil war, uh, sectarian strife, uh, a potential broader regional conflict. Vladimir Putin simply sees it as an affair. Uh, and I, I think that really one reason why Secretary Clinton said what she did is somewhat akin to the segment you had prior to this. She has a staffer who brings her intelligence or other kinds of briefings. It sounds very alarming. It gets summed up into one or two sentences, leaving some critical context or detail out. And so she goes to the cameras and issues a warning. But why go it to turns the out not to be 100%. Right before the president is about to meet with Putin, what was the strategy? Was it so that Putin would be under pressure? And apparently Putin didn't feel to be under pressure because he's sending the arms anyway. Right. I don't think Putin has felt pressure. Uh, really, if you look at some of what seem like the silly little building blocks of these kinds of diplomatic engagements, Russia exercised strong body language by Putin dissing the president on the G8 and NATO summits. And so just by coming to this meeting, he feels like he has given to the president. And now it's the president's turn to give something in return. That's not the way a lot of ordinary Americans would see it, not the way common sense people would say it. But whether you're dealing with the Chinese or the Russians, a lot of tough players. This is the way they set it up. So I don't think Putin felt any pressure. Hey, Stephen. Uh, Buck Sexton here. I wanted to ask you, President Barack Obama gets criticized a lot for being sort of wimpy with regards to Russia. If he wanted to poke back at the Russian bear, what are some of the things that he could do? Obviously, there's this tentative agreement they seem to be reaching from a diplomatic standpoint about what to do in Syria, but no one believes that's going anywhere. Is there, are there any levers that this administration currently has, could deploy in other areas of the world, just in terms of the, uh, policy, that could actually get the Russians to move on Syria or anywhere else for that matter? Right. Well, you have to have at least some sense of a reputation that you're more than just leading from behind at best. Uh, so you have to have some overall uh, image, persona, theme to what you're doing. One of the, the great powers that President Reagan had was a moral and broad cause behind what he was saying. And it gave him a lot of latitude then to actually compromise from time to time. With regard to Russia now, say this particular shipment, if we really wanted to send Putin a signal, what we would have done was taken that shipment out without saying a word about it and then go into the meeting and say, oh my, what happened to your ship? And a former KGB head would know exactly what was going on and he would respect that kind of power. Hey, Stephen, it's SE Cup. I, I want to uh, bring us home a little bit. Uh, a few weeks ago, maybe it was more than that now, it's hard to keep track of all this campaign stuff, but uh, Mitt Romney went out and said that Russia was our biggest geopolitical foe. And people made a big deal about that, saying that it was sort of old school and he's out of touch and he doesn't understand, you know, the way the world works. It's not looking so funny anymore. Just how serious do you think we should be taking Putin. I mean, I know we take him seriously, but how, how wrong was Mitt Romney? Well, I don't think he was completely wrong. I, it was, he didn't frame it the way I would have, but then again, no one's ever voted for me. <laughs> uh, so I think the, uh, you know, when it comes to the challenge that Russia presents, it has been profoundly understated since the end of right. the Cold War. I mean, really, as a country, I think we have borderline pathology that we think we can unilaterally declare a war over. Uh, say whether terrorists want a war on us, we can say, oh no, it's over. And somehow that changes them. And similarly with the Cold War and with Russia, their nature hasn't changed until they prove it has changed. Their objectives haven't changed until they show that they have changed. And whether we want to say, oh, the Cold War is so passe, fine. But clearly, Vladimir Putin is using Russian power, which is not small, to make a bad situation far worse, really challenging our ability to try to contain this conflict. So why? That's the question. So look, I'm going to ask that to you for now, Buck. Why? What is the overriding motivation for Russia to stand in the way of world action to stop what everyone sees as a humanitarian crisis in Syria? There are several options that have been laid out to us that we've seen. One is the ideological connection between the two countries going back to some kind of communist efforts in Syria based that the, the Russian nation has tried over the years. We've got the port on the Mediterranean. We've heard about the port on the Mediterranean that the Russians maintain. Um, and, and we know they see it as a foothold into the Middle East, but I, I don't know. Do, are these 
any one of these or the, them in the aggregate enough to really stand in the face of the entire world? Well, one, I think that they're trying to set an issue of, of precedent here. Um, uh, and I think that they really, they do, they at least say they're very upset about what happened in Libya. Um, they right. they view this on, as their only, idiot, right? uh, look, for domestic political reasons, they want to put a thumb in the eye of the United States whenever they can. That, that generally speaking, seems to look good for them. And on this issue, it's just another, it's another way to do that. And part of the problem here is, and what, one of the reasons I asked our guest about this, is that a lot of the the geopolitical levers you would try to pull with other countries aren't necessarily as applicable with Russia. It's a, it's, its economy is very hydrocarbon based. It's the second largest exporter of, of oil in the world. And oil prices are pretty high right now. So it's able to get away with a lot because it doesn't need some new trade agreement with us. Well, so there aren't those sort of lower level ways to do things. And I think that part of this here is that you're asking why? Why right. not? They don't suffer any consequences for it. And that's what I was trying to get to. Is that the reason? There are no consequences for how Russia's acting. Is that the question, Stephen? Is it why not? I mean, because Russia's <coughs> making itself not only persona non grata to the, to the Western world, but s assuming they want some kind of role in the Middle East, they're making themselves unpopular in the Middle East as well. Well, clearly this can go in ways they don't plan. Uh, I just don't think that Russia's leadership right now cares. I think there's a lot of truth to the notion that they are, they are oil rich. Uh, and so one way in a long term, you don't have a short term option, but in a long term, if you had a real strategy to use our own energy abilities here and be less dependent on world markets, that will affect a real factor in Russia's power. Uh, but there, I think there's a lot of risks in what's been called the Arab Spring. I consider it basically to be the instability that spread across this dangerous region. I don't think we had a choice about the instability happening, but we have a lot of choices, hard ones to make about what we want to do to shape the outcome. I don't think Russia's really got a lot of great options. Its best friends are Iran and Syria, and those are not necessarily trending in the direction of stability. 